How's it going? It's Lucero Boy, and I want to talk about what it's like to be a lab technician. I was a quality assurance microbiology lab technician for about six months, and it's a career path I wish I knew about when I was in college. I was extremely lucky to get that opportunity, and if I knew about it, I could have done things in college to land it sooner. I've seen videos about medical lab technicians and research lab technicians. I believe the generic lab technician job is more easily accessible and common than those specialized jobs. A lot of people don't know that a lot goes into to quality assurance of consumer goods. In the United States, we have to protect the consumers and that's where microbiologists and chemists come in. So I'll be talking about the general work a lab technician is responsible for in these work environments. And then specifically go into a microbiology lab that I have experience in. In a quality assurance setting, a medical setting, or a research setting, there are analysts that do specific testing. The job of a lab technician is to make sure that the lab is running smoothly and that the analysts have everything available to conduct their tests. I like to say that a lab technician does lab housekeeping. They maintain supplies, clean the lab, calibrate instruments, and participate in data entry when applicable depending on the lab you're in, will dictate the specific work for a lab technician. For example, in a chemistry lab, a technician will make sure the analysts have all the reagents they need, keep glassware and tools cleaned, calibrate instruments, and organize paperwork. In a microbiology lab, a technician will make sure the analysts have all the growth media they need, calibrate and maintain incubators and fridges, clean the lab to reduce microbial growth, and do environmental monitoring. Lab technicians can make anywhere between thirty dollars to $50,000 a year. My starting salary was $45,000 and I worked in New York. What qualities should a lab technician have? They need to be a fast learner and readily react to any needs of the lab. They need to be organized and practice good documentation. They need to be familiar with Excel, have good time management, and be confident working independently. They need good communication skills to plan with analysts and they need to be able to stand for long periods of time and be able to lift up to 40 pounds. A lab technician is considered an entry-level position, and some may only require an associate's degree in a related field such as chemistry, biology, microbiology, organic chemistry, and so on. However, it is crucial you have a four-year degree in those fields for your resume to clear the initial screening. It is very important to participate in research or assist your science professors in their projects. Recruiters want to see lab experience outside of the classroom. This is something that I lacked and I wasn't able to get a single interview because of that. As far as knowledge goes, a lot is learned on the job. It is great to be familiar with lab instruments such as balance, pH meter, and the centrifuges. Many lab techniques such as gram stain, titration, and reagent preparation are great too. However, while every lab must adhere to a national standard to ensure results are trustworthy, each lab will have a specific way they want things done. As such, a lot of the learning is done in the lab and prior knowledge helps. In my experience, knowing how to dilute reagents is likely the most complex thing a lab technician would need to know. In a research and development lab, or R&D lab, knowledge is more critical. The tests done in those labs require more insight. In a quality assurance lab, or a QA lab, tests are routine and the results are either within specifications or not. Thus, being able to follow procedure in a QA lab will suffice. When I first started as a microbiology lab technician, it was three years after I graduated, and I was really worried that I lacked the fundamental knowledge to perform adequately. I found that everything was learned on the job. I rarely had to implement any science-related education I had, aside from having to dilute stock solutions from time to time. If this sounds like a job you'd be interested in, this is what my daily experience as a QA microbio lab technician was like. My company produces facial wipes, hand wipes, sanitary wipes, and swabs. These are used by hospitals, directly by consumers, and businesses. The microbiology lab is responsible for testing the purified water, raw material such as cloth, swabs, or pads, bulk liquid, which is the solution that was infused into the raw material, and the finished product for any microbes. As long as the results were within specifications, the product was sold and distributed. If it was out of specifications, it would be discarded and investigated. So this is how my day would start. In the morning, I would come in and turn on the autoclaves. Autoclaves are basically steam ovens that sterilize objects or reagents. I would also turn on the water baths. 
The water bats were used to keep melted growth media liquid throughout the day. I would then look around the lab to see if anything needed to be immediately cleaned or organized. I would go around and ask the analysts how much media they needed melted and I would see if we needed any more pour plates for the day. I would then take the solid media and put it into the autoclave for a melt cycle. Each autoclave cycle was documented and I wrote that information on the relevance sheet. Next, I would check the levels of growth media in our inventory. I would check their expiration dates, if we had enough to last a week, and that they passed visual inspection. When I determined what media needed to be made, I would print out a sheet that had the instructions on how to make the media. The sheet was pre-made by previous employees to streamline the note taking process. Basically, the sheet would list the ingredients needed per one liter of water. It would also require the information of the ingredients, such as manufacturer, expiration, and lot number. I would also need to designate a lot number for the media I was making, what it was dispensed in, and its expiration. Next, I would go to the production floor with another analyst to collect water. We would take purified water samples for the analyst to test, as well as purified water for media preparation. I would also collect the bulk liquid samples produced by the liquid department. I would document taking the bulk liquid and label them to be discarded one month from mixing. If we had bulk liquid to be discarded, I would discard them into the flammable or corrosive waste drum. After returning, I would begin making media. I would use a clean technique to reduce the possible contamination to the media. I would dispense the correct amount of powder or liquid into a beaker. I would then dissolve the mixture into the appropriate amount of water and transfer it to a flask. The flask would be placed on a hot plate with a magnetic stirring rod. Some media needs to be boiled while others just need to be warmed and mixed thoroughly. As the solution mixed, I would label the containers required for the media. I used a special autoclave label that would change color to indicate it was autoclaved. The label would have a lot number that designated what day of the year it was created, the expiration date, and an ID for the media type. When the media was thoroughly mixed or boiled, I would use a machine to dispense the media into the bottles. The bottles were loosely capped to avoid pressure buildup in the autoclave. The media would then be sterilized in the autoclave. Afterwards, I would clean my bench area, any glassware I used, and the tools I used. Depending on the autoclave cycle, it would last anywhere between 30 minutes to one hour. During this time, I would take the daily temp tail recordings from the incubators and fridges. Temp tails are devices that monitor the temperature of the environment. I would download the data from the temp tails and make sure they were within range. If they were not in range, I would go to a senior analyst or supervisor and we would document the reason for the out of range and the action we took. All the data was saved electronically. When completed, I would reset and return the temp tails to the incubator or fridge. During this time, I would take the media I melted earlier and pour them into petri dishes if needed. I would print another sheet similar to the media sheet and document relevant information. The pour plates would receive their own lot number and expiration just like the prepared media. Plates were poured in the clean room near a Bunsen burner to prevent any contamination. I would then electronically document the creation of the pour plates and the media. Our lab used a software called LIMS. The software allowed us to electronically document all tests. Media had to be recorded into inventory and growth promoted before an analyst could use it for a test. When media was logged into inventory, it would be quarantined until the growth promotion test was passed. The LIMS software will tell you what growth promotion needs to be performed on each media before it can be used. I would print labels for growth promotion and write what organism I needed to use, initial, and date them. When the autoclave cycle finished, I would take the media out to cool down. While it cooled down, I would go on lunch. After lunch, I would growth promote the pour plates and the media. I would need a sample for sterility, pH, and one for each organism. I would use weekly cultures that I prepared every week, and I would either swirl or streak the organism. I would then put the samples into an incubator for 48 hours. If there were any growth promotions that finished incubating, I would read the samples. If the results were as expected, I would release the media from quarantine. Lastly, I would test the pH of the media and make sure it was within range and document. I would sign the document and have another analyst verify. I would then scan the document, save and attach it to the limbs test. The physical copy would then be thrown away. I would put the media away into its appropriate place and label them with quarantine stickers, initial and date, until the growth promotion was completed. The petri dishes would go into the fridge and quarantined as well after each were individually labeled. Throughout the day, I would help the analysts clean their bottles and tools used on their tests. 
I would run the washing machine and autoclave cycles to sterilize the equipment. That's basically what a typical day was like for me as a microbiologist technician. I actually really enjoyed doing that. It was a big change from working retail for 8 years, but it's the most fulfilled I've felt in a really long time. It was the kind of work I liked and I loved planning my media prep throughout the week. I even developed an Excel media tracker to estimate the amount of money the lab saved making media rather than buying it. I was also able to track how much media the lab used every week and month for each type of media. I am now a microbiologist one, and I do testing on raw materials, environmental monitoring, finished goods, and organism identification. I teach new technicians how to perform their role, and if needed, I can fill in as well. I hope this gave you some insight on what it's like to be a technician in a QA lab, and a little bit of what it's like to be an analyst. I wish I knew about this career and its requirements earlier so I could have taken the necessary steps to start this career sooner. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer them. In the future, I'd like to talk about specific media preparation and techniques, microbiology tests, and other things that I've learned in my lab. If you're interested in that, or personal finance, subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.